whether you're choosing a shirt or making a life and death decision, there are reasons we do what we do. Jonah Lair decided to delve into that process in his new book, How We Decide. Good morning, Jonah. Good morning. I see you have the three ice cream cones on the cover, but it was actually you fretting over cereal at the supermarket that prompted this book? I called this the Cheerio problem. It took me about 20 minutes pretty consistently to choose between different kinds of Cheerios, you know, multi-grain, apple, cinnamon, whatever. <laughs> and of course, it wasn't just Cheerios. It was toothpaste, detergent, whatever. It was, you know, anytime I had lots of options and they all seemed roughly equivalent, I would spend way too long trying to pick one. So you started to delve into this decision-making process and you went back to, to the 70s and the marshmallow experiment. So telling. Tell me about that. This is a simple experiment done by Walter Mitchell. He'd bring four-year-olds into his lab and give them a simple choice. They could have one marshmallow right away, or if they'd wait about 15 minutes, they could have a second marshmallow. Not surprising, it's about every kid wanted to wait for the second marshmallow. Unfortunately, some kids just couldn't wait, so they'd pop the marshmallow in their mouth right away. The average waiting time was about two minutes. Mitchell found that what allowed some kids to wait wasn't that they wanted the marshmallow any less. It was simply that they found a way to distract themselves. So these were the kids who would go stand in the corner or sing a song from Sesame Street or whatever. They pretend the marshmallow was a cloud. It turned out when he went back 12 years later that how long you could wait for a marshmallow at the age of four was the most predictive test you could give a four-year-old. It predicted their SAT scores, their GPA, how lucky they were to do drugs, behavioral problems, temper problems. So people who wait for things versus going for instant gratification generally do better in life. Yes, it's a really important skill, learning how to delay gratification. What that means isn't simply that you've got more willpower, it's that you know how to distract yourself. Let's talk about people like Sully. We had him here on the show, you know, the captain who landed uh, the plane on the Hudson. How does somebody like that make a split-second decision like that? I think the old theory was that people like Sullenberger simply don't experience fear, that somehow they're braver than the rest of us. It turns out when you put people in brain scanners that everyone gets scared. We all get scared in roughly the same amount. The crucial variable is how much a part of the brain called the prefrontal cortex, a rational part of the brain, is able to turn on to compensate for your fear. So I think some people are able to think through their fear and make sure their fear doesn't turn into panic. And that's what defines people like Captain Sullenberger. Is that something we could learn? Could we train ourselves to be better decision makers? Absolutely. And, and, and you see pilots practice this. They practice what's called deliberate calm. That's why they go in flight simulators. Not simply to learn the checklist of things to do, but also to learn how to think under pressure, you know, to think straight when they're scared. What advice do you have for, for us mere mortals in, in our daily decision making? Practice and I think learn from your mistakes. Try to think about thinking, and it's by thinking about thinking, by trying to structure your thought process, the task at hand, sometimes trust your gut, sometimes try to be rational, that you can learn how to make better decisions. How do we choose the person we marry? Oh, that's a tough question. Science really hasn't done too much work. It's tough to study love in a brain scanner, but I think there's some very intriguing evidence that it's the really hard decisions in life, the most profound decisions, the ones that involve the most information, that's when we, that's, that's when we, we should really trust our emotional brain. Go with your gut. Go with your gut when it's the really hard decisions. And in the last 20 seconds, I've always been curious why some athletes choke and why some do well. The, well, it's, it fish. seems to be the same thing as my problem with Cheerios. You're thinking too much. So you're taking an action that should be performed automatically and instead you're thinking about the details of your golf swing or how to shoot a free throw. And that's when the process breaks down. It's fascinating. Joe and Lair, thanks so much. Thank you. If you would like to read an excerpt of How We Decide, go to our website. It's earlyshow.cbsnews.com.